Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Play Some Video Games, the only gaming podcast with more pumpkin spice lattes than an average white girl in, this, in September. It is I, your host, Kevin. With us at the round table this week is Nathan. How are we doing, Nathan? Uh, glad to be here, guys. Oh, we're glad to have you, sir. And back for a second appearance is Seth. Seth, how are we doing? Doing well. Awesome. And last... But certainly not the least, because unfortunately Q could not join us this evening. It is his birthday, so happy birthday, Q, out to you. So filling in those mighty, mighty shoes is Donnie himself. How are we, sir? Greetings, Koopalinks! Donnie is very excited to be here today, so you know what? Let's kick it to him first, Donnie. Donnie, what have you been up to? Uh, playing Metroid. Playing lots and lots of Metroid. Um, jumped into Super Metroid on my 3DS and still playing Metroid Prime Federation Force. Uh, played some Hot Shots Golf, played some Me Plaza games. We'll talk about those later, but that's it. Lots of Metroid this week. Wow, that was much shorter than I thought you were going to go on. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so then, uh, Nathan, what have you been up to, sir? You mean, how high have I been up? I've Ooh. been flying all around the country this week, guys. Mr. Worldwide. <sighs> well, not quite worldwide, but America-wide, sure. Um, yeah, I've been very, very busy, so... I was in Seattle one day and then Atlanta the next, and you know how it is. You just kind of lose track of time and days and space, and it just all becomes a wobbly goo of what. But uh, I did get in some gaming because Ooh. I played a little more Madden because the EA Access trial has not yet expired. Wow. Um, I gave it some more time, and I've come around a little bit on it, and I do enjoy it a little bit more than I did previously, so I guess you could say it's growing on me. I, oh, that's good. I think that's the right term to use. <laughs> like a fungus or? Mm, more like a growth that you just, you don't know if you, <laughs> uh, you know, you should you go to the doctor about it or not. You, you know, you're not sure yet. Does this look infected? Yeah. Uh, so I, I started the franchise mode and there's a really cool feature on it that I discovered where it takes you through and it kind of, it kind of quasi sims the game and it says, hey, here's a moment. Do you want to come in? And it's like third and four. And you, do you want to call this play and take it out and actually play this, you know, segment? And you can say yeah or no. Continue to to sim it, and it's really kind of cool. Uh, so it makes going through the game a little bit quicker if you are a little more strapped for time. I do enjoy just playing the whole game though. It it does feel a little different than previously, but it's pretty good. Um. Like I said previously, though, I still don't think it's worth a full sixty dollars to me. But I, I, I like it better than when I first had interacted with it. So, and that could be, you know, getting past the the salt in the wound with the RAM stuff. But that aside, it's a, still a decent game. Other than that, I did play some of the Battlefield One beta on Xbox One, and I played it with a a, a community member actually last night. I was not feeling that beta at all. I played it for maybe a couple hours, and I I had high hopes for this. And yeah, this is a beta, I know. Um, so I'm not sure. judging it by its cover, but you're at least, you're smelling what the cook is cooking at this point, you know what I mean? <laughs> and yeah. the smell just is a little off. And no. I just, it feels a little slow, because, uh, you know, it's World War One, and we're all used to these really fast, uh, you know, Halo 5, just sliding around everywhere, uh, Titanfall being able to grapple around, and in this one, you're on a camel, or a horse, <laughs> or a tank, or you camels? Yeah, yeah there are. <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> uh -huh. uh, or you could be on a, you know, on an airplane or something, and the coolest thing that I can say about this game so far is that a couple times I was able to uh, come in on a be a tail gunner on a guy who was flying a biplane around and that was kind of cool just being able to be the tail gunner but you know other than that it just it's not hooking me it doesn't look visually very good uh i didn't have any issues when i played as far as connectivity or any problems like that but just it's i'm not feeling it yet you guys it's it's something that i know that when it comes out i'll get the ea access you know 10 hour trial of it and i'll see how it really grabs me then but uh, at this point, not really excited about it. No, oh, it's disappointing. Had high hopes for that. Um, all right, then let's uh, let's go to Seth. Then Seth, I believe you you had some time with Battlefield too, didn't you? I did, I did. Um, and I'm not 
I've never played any of the other Battlefield games other than betas, and I generally am terrible at them. Um, but I wanted to jump into this one because I like Battlefront a lot, and um, I like World War One and, and like the setting. Uh, first, I am terrible at it, uh, so it's always hard to be excited about a game that you're terrible at. Um, I probably... I, there's a short video on our YouTube, maybe 15 minutes, and I probably died like 15 times in it. I don't know. I, I got uh, run over by tanks and um, trampled by horses and all sorts of things. So um, I thought it looked really good. It must be because I was playing on a PlayStation 4 instead of an Xbox One. But... Uh, oh. <laughs> uh, sorry. But um, but it, it looks like it's fun. I, I'll be interested in, in seeing the um, reviews of the single-player stuff to, to see whether I want to jump into that. I probably won't ever get into the multiplayer. Um, so I, I played that uh, over the past uh, week or so. Um, another game I got into was uh, Valley. It's a downloadable game. Um on the PS4 and I believe on Steam. I'm not sure if it's on Xbox One off the top of my head. Um, but it's kind of a first-person first exploration game in the vein of uh, Firewatch and um, Gone Home and things like that where you're in this valley in Colorado. Um, we do have a review up on the site and also a uh, quick video on our YouTube, Reviews Done Quick. Um, it goes over it. I really liked it. I think it's a good game. Um, there are some parts that are weaker than others, but I, I was glad that I got the chance to play it and, and am, uh, would definitely recommend it to people who enjoy those sort of first-person exploration kind of games. Um, there's a little bit of light combat that uh, is kind of unnecessary, but other than that, it's mostly just walking around, running around, jumping, things like that. Um, aside from that, I have been playing No Man's Sky still. Um, I, right now I'm, I'm going to try for the platinum. Um, I still, I have a few gold trophies so far. All of the trophies are based on, um, sort of counting stats, like how long you walk, um, how many galaxies you visited or star systems you visited, uh, how many aliens you meet. Um, and I still have quite a few left to do. I, I need to get, um, I need to shoot down spaceships and I need to shoot down the sentinels and I need to discover, um, all the animals on like six more planets. So that's kind of my goal right now, even more than reaching the center. Um, and I'm having fun with that still. Um, it will be a little bit tough, um, there's one trophy where you have to be on a planet that is, has extreme conditions, whether it's extreme heat, extreme cold, extreme number of sentinels, something like that. And you have to be on um, those planets for, I don't know, for a certain amount of time. It's like 10 hours total or something like that. Um, so that one will take a while once I get to it, and it, that's just a matter of finding the right planet. Um, but I'm still having fun with it. Um, and it's, uh, I've, I've still enjoyed it. I think it's fun. And if anybody is at all curious in it, maybe, maybe don't pay $60 for it. Wait till it gets cheaper, something like that. Um, but it's absolutely a technical marvel, um, despite its glitches. Um, and, uh, and I just, I, I really think it's a very good game as long as you know what you're getting into. Um, it's definitely my most played game of the year so far and probably will stay that way um, unless I really get into um, uh, NBA here in a couple weeks. Um, the other game that I've played is this uh, game called Bound, which is part, <laughs> of, part of the uh, PlayStation Play lineup, the last game, and it's the one where it's the weird-looking person who who's doing ballet. I was going to say, it's the dancing one, right? Yes, it is the dancing one. It looks uh, great. It, it looks it looks really cool. It has a great visual style. But um, I did not have very much fun playing it. <laughs> uh, I had had, uh, they're laughing because I, on our chat, have been um, 
espousing my hate of the game. Um, and I had a whole, I had a tirade planned about how much I hated it. I was going to talk about how the platforming is terrible and it led to a lot of unnecessary deaths. I was going to talk about how the camera is sometimes complicit in those deaths because the camera kind of sucks. Uh, I was going to talk about how each of the six levels feels really similar to each other, about how the story is a little bit too abstract, um, how there's no challenge to the game other than its shoddy platforming. Unleash and, uh, your anger. <laughs> and, uh, and generally, I'm okay with there being no challenge. Um, I love Journey. Abzu is a pretty good game. I think some on our site overrate Abzu, but um, <laughs> but anyway, those games are interesting. Um, I was also going to comment about how the game's visual style, I think, masks major clipping issues. When you go into the wall, um, all of the particles break apart or whatever. I think that's a clipping problem more than... Um, and they hit it visually, but it got kind of annoying to me. Um, and I also was going to... Talk talk about how there's one choice you make at the very end of the game that is paid off extremely poorly, as in there is absolutely no payoff. It just, you choose to do one of two things, and then it goes to the credits, and then that's the end of the game. So that's what I was going to talk about, I, uh, but I decided I was going to stay positive instead. <laughs> um, the music is gorgeous. Um, the main character when you're not having to jump around, um, really controls pretty well. And the, the dancing mechanic is interesting. And, um, you could definitely walk into an art gallery and watch bound being played in an art gallery. Um, it looks really cool. I just had zero fun playing it. And that was my week in gaming. Seth, I got a question about Valley, man. Yeah. So I watched your let's stream or your let's play on the live stream and I uh, it looked really fun. It almost looked like uh some sort of like Sonic first person game. Like you were running really fast and jumping all over the place. Yeah. I only watched like ten minutes of it. Yeah. That that's my that's the main reason why I like that game. It uh there are parts of it where you're walking around more slowly, but then there are some parts you put on this suit that helps you the it's called a leaf suit and i forget what leaf stands for but it stands for something um but when you wear the suit you can run really fast you can leap really far and you can um give and take life so, which seems like kind of a random third thing but <laughs> you can if there's a tree in front of you and it's dead you can give it life if there's a tree in front of you and it's alive and you need some energy to survive you can take the energy you can do that with animals too i could never bring myself to actually take <laughs> little rabbits it's awful life but um there is a trophy for um for taking the life of a lot of animals that is my, the my, dark my question <laughs> <laughs> my, my question was i i read your review and you compared it to other you know, more recent first person exploration games, mm -hmm. kind of like, uh, you know, gone home or everybody's gone to the rapture. Yep. And I'm in this weird mix where my wife and I played gone home. We enjoyed it and it wasn't amazing or anything. It didn't change our lives, but we enjoyed it. And it was something we enjoyed playing. And we both actually co-op played everybody's gone to the rapture and we both hated it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like we were like, this is just, it's boring and it's obtuse and there was just not enough action there for us to really keep trying to follow the narrative. So on one end, we've got Gone Home, which had substantial narrative and, and minor gameplay and minor pu puzzle solving. The other one, we had, you know, this extreme narrative, but, you know, didn't have as much uh, in the gameplay. Is Valley something that we could do? Or, I mean, um, having played it all the way through, what do you think knowing that about me? I, I think so. I think the story I found the the things I really liked about Valley was the um I liked the story. It gets a little weird, um, especially by the end. Um but it's a pretty straightforward story. It's a it's a more linear experience than everybody's gone to the rapture. There's still some exploring, but the 
in Rapture, you can uh, miss out on some of the story if you skip a house or something. Sure. And this, you're not going to miss out on on the main story bits. Um, there are some you can you find notes throughout, and that adds to the story, but it's not necessary. Um, and then my other favorite part about it was how you move around the game. It was when you're running downhill. Um, there are there are a couple different parts that uh, you run downhill on this track, and the track helps you run even faster. So you start running super fast and then you get to kind of a ramp and you just jump and you jump over a huge ravine. And that's, I, I described it like riding a roller coaster, but you're controlling a first person roller coaster. And those sections were my favorite sections or any part where you're running and jumping and kind of moving around differently than you do in these kind of games usually. And how, how friendly are those, are those controls? Like, is that something, uh, a newbie gamer such as my wife could do, or is it pretty, uh, pretty, you know, is expect quite a bit from the, from the player? There's, I, I think it's pretty friendly. Um, there is a little bit of, uh, like the, some of the platforming kind of stuff can be kind of hard be, to judge how far to jump. Um, and how far it felt like sometimes you'll jump, the right amount, and then the next time you'll do the same thing and you'll jump way over where you needed to be. Um, but it, it's it layers on the different uh, things that you need to do. You know, first you learn how to run faster, and then it shows you how to jump, and then it shows you um, how to give and take life. And really, those are, as far as I remember, the only three different buttons. Um, that you really used, um, other than an action button, you know, to open doors and things like that. Okay. That sounds pretty, I mean, it sounds like something I want to try. Yeah. Um, I'm kind of hoping that this is one of those, uh, PlayStation plus titles down the line mm-hmm. right now. It definitely so, feels thanks. like you'll, you'll be able to get a, a good deal on it sometime. And it's, if you're think you'll be interested in it, I, I think you'll like it. Cool. Cool. All right. So I guess that leaves me. Uh, haven't done a whole heck of a lot. Um, picking a little bit more way in Animal Crossing now that Jason is playing. He kind of got me back into it a bit. So I've been playing with that here and there. Uh, but the big gaming chunk of my time this week is gone into Fallout 4's final DLC that launched this week. Um, had a bit of a botched launch on PS4. Supposed to be like live at like, I think it was like 8 p.m. Monday Eastern time. And it went live on Steam, and it went live on Xbox, and it did not go live on PS4 until about 9.30 at night. So I was sitting there at my PlayStation, ready to download and start playing it, and had to wait a little bit longer. But uh, really cool so far. Um, I don't know if the story is going to be as good as the Far Harbor, or Fahaba, was um, for the Fallout uh, experience, but it is very, very cool. So if you're not familiar with it, uh, basically it's, it's a rundown amusement park similar to Disneyland or Disney World, uh, and it's been taken over by three tribes of raiders, uh, and they all have one person that they answer to, their leader, uh, and that person basically decides how it's going. Well, you discover this guy in a subway station who says his family's been kidnapped in this park, and he was able to escape, but they need help. Well, you go help him. So if his name is the nice Jared, guy do not follow him. <laughs> if you do hop on that train though you find out shortly after that it's not what you thought it was they basically trapped you uh, and you take the the monorail to the amusement park and they drop you off at what they call the gauntlet which was a pretty brutal like 30 minute maze filled with traps uh, at every step like you know hand grenades hanging from like raw wire that if you bump into is going to set them all off and uh, floors that would fall away and stuff like that so it was kind of nuts but once you get through your final part is you you fight the guy who is the head of the the raider tribes in a death match but he has it rigged so that he wins uh and this one guy gets in touch with you via radio and he's like hey listen to me and you'll live you know go in this locker get this weapon and you'll be able to beat him and yada 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 so i go to the locker i'm like all right cool this is gonna be some awesome weapon and it's a squirt gun um, and basically you use the squirt gun to short out his power armor and take him down, but it's still a tough battle even when he is weakened. But, uh, and then basically they make you the leader of their new tribe and your whole, 
um, point of the game so far, at least from what I can tell, is keeping the three tribes from killing each other. Um, you have one group that is uh, just like mentally disturbed. They just want to destroy things. And you got one group who's in it just for the money and they're more civilized about their manners. And the third one's they haven't really they seem to be the craziest out of the three um they actually in their in their turf they have people um with dog collars around their neck that they'll blow up like a suicide squad-esque type scenario and they basically torture these people but then they also have animals that are mutated that they use and they have their own zoo quote unquote so it's kind of weird but it's a lot of fun and right now you're trying to reclaim more areas of the theme park for your tribes and then you assign the different tribes uh, that area for their own turf and you're trying to balance the the three so uh i'm only a couple hours into it so far but it's very cool the the, the whole amusement park atmosphere is kind of awesome there's tons and tons of buildings and rides and attractions to go in and interact with so it's uh pretty cool one of the things i did um actually this morning no yesterday morning was uh i forget the name but it was called like a battle dome or something like that and it was basically the amusement park version of battle bots we had all these robots that would fight to the death, but you accidentally end up in the cage with them and you're battling all the robots at the same time too. But uh, pretty cool, a lot of fun. Um, so I'll keep updating as that's going on. But that's been it for gaming for me. So enough from us. Let's hear from you guys. And each and every week we jump into the mailbag and review our messages. Message for you, sir. Our first one this week comes in from James, who wants to know uh, what, if any, games do we currently have pre-ordered for a future release? All right, so um, we're, we're reviewing these questions, right? I give about an 85% on that one. <laughs> that's a pretty good score. Yeah, yeah that's a, that is. That's, that's a, a good, great eight. Yeah. That is. He, well, well placed. I like the, the, the process that he went through to come to that actual sentence of a question. And... Mm-hmm. You know, he, it's provocative and it's forward thinking. Very good job. And I'd like to see more from what he does. Now, would you would you answer this question again? You know, maybe maybe in a year or so I'll come back to it. Uh, just kind of see what, what still remains of this question and see how my thoughts have changed on it and how my mm. maturity level has improved. Uh, maybe. Yeah. And uh, mm. at that point, yeah, I'd like to review it again. Cool. I, I'm hoping personally for in the future they do a remaster, but you know. Yeah, remaster or possibly remake. I'd like to see if they could do this in a couple different episodes. Maybe they could do you know a part A and a part B on this question. Uh, mm. Give it a little bit more time to digest. You know, kind of put a hook in there and bring it back in for the second half. And then they're gonna, but then they're going to throw a season pass at you, and then you got to spend more for the question. Yeah, but if you do that, it's just not going to work. You know, because yeah. eventually with the season pass, you. You know, it's like they say in the Dark Knight, you die the hero where you, you live long enough to see yourself become the villain. <laughs> That's what's going to happen. Oh, that joke went on for way too long, but I love it. So now we will answer the question, not just review it. Um, I'll go first because I'm easy. Uh, I don't really pre-order games, so I don't have anything pre-ordered. Uh, I, I I used to pre-order back in the day. If there was a game that I knew wouldn't be really popular or might be hard to find, I would pre-order it to be guaranteed a copy of it. Nowadays, it doesn't seem to be as much of an issue, uh, in most games at least. So I generally rule of thumb, I don't pre-order anything. So that's me. Uh, Nathan, what about you? Well, currently I have nothing pre-ordered because, you know, not buying anything right now. But if I did have anything pre-ordered, it would definitely be the, um, uh, what is it called? Call of Duty Infinite Warfare, right? Infinite Warfare? Yes. Because yep. that just looks really good, especially after playing the Battlefield 1 beta. I was disappointed by that. Mm. If I had that pre-ordered, I would cancel it at this point, honestly. Right. Um, and also Titanfall. I would definitely have that on pre-order. And the Fractured But Whole of South Park, I would have <laughs> that on pre-order. And oh, man, there's there's a lot that I would have. Oh, Forza, for sure. Forza would be on pre-order for me. Forza Horizon 3. Uh, ReCore. Um Gears of War 4, even though I haven't played the other ones, I'd buy this one because everybody else is doing it, and that's what the cool kids do. But yeah, there, there'd be a lot of games that I would have pre-ordered right now, honestly. Nathan would be broke. Um, all right, Donnie, what's on your uh, pre-order list, if anything, right now? I pre-order all kinds of stuff. We know. Constantly, <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, I get that pre-orders... I get that you don't have to anymore to get the game. I understand that that's not something that's required anymore. We have digital games, and you know, 
games are plenty. Everybody gets a copy. It's not a big deal. I pre-order games because it helps me. I like to track out basically what I'm spending. Um, I, I more or less have a credit card dedicated to my gaming. It's more like dedicated to hobbies, but uh, more or less gaming. And I lay out all of the game purchases that I'm planning on making over time. And I, I get them all on that credit card and, my, and I make my monthly payments and I schedule it all out where, you know, nothing. I don't feel like I'm getting hit all at once if there's, you know, three or four games coming out in a month or something like that. Uh, games that I currently have pre-ordered for this fall holiday or upcoming season. I've got Pokemon Sun and Moon. I've got the double pack pre-ordered. That's kind of like a quasi Christmas present for my son. Because uh, he and I will be uh, tag teaming and playing that together. I've got Gears, because again, all the cool people are getting it. Uh, I'd like to know. I'd like to let the record show that I was the first cool kid on this podcast, trumpeting that game. Uh, I'm really excited to play Gears. I love Gears. Uh, I've got Call of Duty Four. I basically have all the games that Nathan said he would pre. <laughs> <laughs> I've got Call of Duty Four pre-ordered because Call of Duty 4 uh, Modern Warfare Remastered is coming and the Infinite Warfare looks uh, really good. Um, I have Darksiders War Mastered pre-ordered on Wii U because it was $20 <laughs> and I really enjoyed Darksiders 2 on Wii U. And I have um, Paper Mario Colors Flash pre-ordered on Wii U. It looks like it's the last great Wii U game it saddens me to say it. I think it's true. I hope it's not. But it looks like it's the sad, the last sad Wii U game to come out before the swan song that Zelda hits. And I want to play it. Um, so that's it. I also have some Amiibo pre-ordered, but I'll touch on those later. All righty. Seth, what about you? All right. Um, I'm usually not big on pre-ordering games um, either until it gets kind of a lot closer to the game. Um, and even then, like the last one I pre-ordered was No Man's Sky. And that was because that was actually kind of starting to sell out. Is that um, a poor choice? No, not at all. <laughs> He's a no, no, not at all. Um, not for me, for others, maybe. But uh, the other one I, I just pre-ordered was... Um, NBA 2K17, which comes out in about two weeks. Um, And uh, that was mostly, I I usually, if I'm buying a new game, I get it from Amazon. And it's because I have Amazon gift cards and things like that. And also through Prime, you get a 20% discount. Um, And I can get it on launch day, delivered straight to my house. I don't have to go anywhere. Um, I... I, w- I wasn't going to get NBA this year because I have 2K16 on my hard drive. It was just free on um, whatever, PlayStation, PlayStation Plus. Plus. <laughs> um, but just the more things that get released about it. Um, also, my birthday's coming up, I think, two days beforehand. So I, And I usually get um, you know birthday money or whatever. So I'm sort of counting on that, I guess. Um, But I wasn't going to get it this year just because I have last year's and you don't need it every year. And then the more stuff that's come out about it, um, just this week, a lot of stuff has dropped, um, kind of getting into news item stuff. But um, the stuff I'm excited about is they have separate commentary teams based on where your team is. And um, they're going to do league expansion drafts and things like that during your actual franchise mode um they have dynamic rule changes a lot of nerdy stuff and i like i'm kind of a nerdy basketball fan um and they have a lot of nerdy things um in this that i that are enough of a change for me that i decided i wanted to grab it um other than that i don't have anything else pre-ordered um i probably the only game that i know of on the horizon is mass effect andromeda and since that's not coming out for at least a year, there's no reason to order it any sooner. Um, other game I'm interested in is Horizon Zero Dawn, um, but I kind of want to wait until it gets closer to launch just yeah. to see how it's how the impressions are going. Um, if because I'm I'm a lot less sure about that. I I get into open world games other than No Man's Sky, and then I never finish them. Um, <laughs> And that's kind of why No Man's Sky doesn't really have a story, so I don't feel like I'm not finishing anything. I'm just having fun with it. Whereas a game like Horizon or like the Assassin's Creed games or whatever, where you have all these check marks that you have to check off, um, and I feel I get overwhelmed, uh, which 
It's odd to say that I'm not overwhelmed by a game that has 18 quintillion planets to explore, but I get overwhelmed by having a bunch of fetch quests in a game. So I don't know. Um, so anyway, I don't I don't have any other games pre-ordered question, currently. I mean, I know we don't need to pre-order games to make sure that we have them anymore, but I mean, there's a lot of pre-order benefits now, mm-hmm. especially with the Prime discount, you know, Best Buy. Gamers Club discount, all the pre-order rewards, especially for multiplayer games, statues, special editions. I mean, is nobody taking advantage of those? I feel like that's probably the biggest reason why I pre-order most of my games. Not only to you know make sure that I can schedule them out and financially take care of everything before it happens, but also that twenty percent goes a long way when you buy you know ten, twelve, fifteen games a year. I well, definitely the, Am- the Amazon do. one works even when you when it's a new release game, so it doesn't. Yeah. Doesn't phase Within me. the first two weeks, I think. It's sometimes even longer. There's still some games that have uh, I've seen after a month or two that still do the discount when you add it to the basket. So I'm not sure what their formula is, but you don't have to pre-order to get the prime discount. Okay. For me, um, it's some games at Best Buy for sure. They have like the ten dollar uh, extra reward yep. zone credit for pre-ordering, and you have to order it before the game comes out to get that, and you get the twenty percent on top of it. Yep. So that's that's definitely a motivator. That's how I got um, Call of Duty. Okay. All right, then, <laughs> since nobody else said anything, we'll move on to the next question. It comes from uh, on Twitter, at DSpin67. Guys, it's Labor Day weekend. Any big gaming plans, and are you grilling anything? My first question to you guys, exclamation point, exclamation point, exclamation point. Um, so I'll go first. Um as far as grilling, I believe there will be some grilling in my future over the next couple of days. We are getting some kind of crappy weather heading our way, though, so it might only be tomorrow. But, yes, I will for sure be grilling all sorts of goodies. Um, as far as gaming plans, I will be spending a good chunk of my weekend playing some games. However, I can't talk about it right now. So, yeah, <laughs> just follow the website. I'll be reviewing another game, but yeah, I can't talk about it till it's released. So, to be continued, but I will be playing my butt off this weekend. So, uh, Nathan, what about you? I don't think so, simply for the fact, uh, because as far as grilling goes, um, I got a lot of stuff going on, and I'm pretty sure that we're going to be just like grabbing Jimmy John's or something. <laughs> so, yeah, that's. I want to. I mean, some burgers sounds really good, or some steak, or some pork chops on the on the grill. Uh, mm-hmm. If I can work it in, I, I definitely will. As far as gaming goes, I doubt it. Um, no. Again, very busy, and I want to play some games, but I just I don't think I'm gonna have any time to this weekend, which really stinks because you know it's three days, but that's three days worth of work. I, I forgot to mention that on Monday uh, we had five inches of rain in my area. Oh yeah, that came in. Uh, you know, a quick two hours or so. And when you have that much water that fast, no matter how good your sewer systems are, that water doesn't know how, doesn't have a place to go fast enough. So uh, I had a lot of water around here. And so because of that, I got some yard work I got to take care of, kind of make things look good again outside, right. as well as figure out my car because... You know, I had like a foot and a half of water that I drove through out of my house and, you know, in the area here, there was water everywhere in the streets. They closed streets after I went through them because there was so much water and my car has got some oddities that are going on. So I'm going to have to figure that out. But uh, yeah, so my, my, my weekend is adult stuff, unfortunately. Boo. Oh, Donnie, save us. Tell, tell me you're doing some gaming and some grilling this weekend. I want to. Um, we've got Tropical Storm Hermine to our south and mm. spinning off rain bands. That's uh, causing me to do some work. We also have the Chick-fil-A kickoff game tomorrow down at the Georgia Dome where I'll be um, helping the public safety responders of Atlanta do their jobs better. So I've got a busy next 24 hours now, Sunday and Monday, I hope, to do something. I don't know if grilling will be in order, but I definitely am going to play some games. Uh, you know, some WW2K that's been calling me. Uh, Nathan, I've been really enjoying that Games with Gold subscription game past couple weeks. Um, I got myself a new system, so uh, definitely going to have my hands all over that and playing some of that. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I'll grill. 
Maybe I will. I've got to go in on Tuesday for a um, for another crown to the dentist. Aww. So I, I need to celebrate some way on Monday, right? <laughs> Absolutely. All right, Seth, what is your Labor Day weekend plans? Well, we are headed um, to my in-laws. Her, My wife's um, brother lives in Connecticut. We live in Ohio, and they're coming over and visiting. They have two kids. We have two kids. So there will probably be some grilling. Don't know whether it'll be me or someone else. Um, and there will probably be pizza. There's a good local pizza place up there that we like. Uh, Gaming-wise, um, don't know. I uh, We might get to this in a little bit, but usually if I go up there and I'm going to be gaming, I would bring my PlayStation Vita. <laughs> um and I and I, I may or may I, I could bring it for one last hurrah because I, I am sending the Vita off to another owner shortly. Um or uh or I might just I, I'm reading some books and doing some other things. I might I also like to take this time to kind of get away from electronics and, and to read and to do some other stuff too, um when we go up there. Uh so probably not a whole lot of gaming for me. All right. Other sure. than uh, Disney Crossy Road. <laughs> All right, fair enough. Uh, our next email comes in from Erica, who ironically enough, guys, it's Kyle's wife. Uh-oh. I, I don't know if he knows she was emailing in or not, but uh, she would like to know if we could only play one video game for the rest of our life, what game would it be and why? And now, no cheating, choosing a series or a collection of games. So let's go with Donnie first on this one. What would be the one game you can play forever and ever and ever? Forever and ever and ever. I would like to say Wind Waker, but I only played that about once a year, and if I had to play it forever, I, I think I would get tired of it. So I will choose Super Mario Maker. Mm. Assuming I can have all online functionalities, it is forever and ever and ever and ever Mario courses. And uh, if I had to choose one game to play forever, it's a pretty good one. It is a lot of content. Can't argue with that. That's for sure. Um, for me, I'm going to go with Fallout 3. Uh, only because I've beaten that game, oh, geez, I mean, no less than 18 times at this point. Uh, and the world is just so massive. Tons of DLC to play. Like, you can get your money's worth out of it, and you can play it in a multitude of different ways and affect the story. So that would be my pick. I have just loved that game forever, so I could keep doing it. Uh, Nathan, what about you? This is a heavy question. It is. I'm inclined to say Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. Ooh, that's a good one. Because as many times as I played through that game, I... You know, I always found something new and something different each time, and I really enjoyed playing. It was it was a lot of fun. Um, but I mean, I don't know if you play a game for the rest of your life. That's as much as a great game it is. You'll eventually see everything. So I kind of think that you need a game that has endless possibilities, right? Like a No Man's Sky or or something that's just a Super based. Mario Maker. No, I, I would assume that this is an apocalyptic event, Donnie, that you are living in a bunker and there is oh, no, no longer internet. Oh, no. So, yeah, at that point, it has to be self-sustaining. Why are you be so dark? Because <laughs> the future, my friend, is dark. He's on the dark side. He's with he the is. emperor. Um, but, yeah, so I, I, I would love to say Knights of the Old Republic for sure because that's just a fantastic game I would love to replay. Uh, but I would also, I would also probably just say because of the sheer, you can do anything you want to in it is Minecraft. I've never played it, but from what mm. I understand, it's like playing with Legos, and I love playing with Legos, so I'm gonna go Minecraft. There you go, uh, Seth. How about you? Um, if you ask me this question at other times, it'd probably be different answers. But right now probably would be no, no man's sky, no man's sky. <laughs> um just because you though you're doing similar things from place to place but at least everything you go and see is completely different and you can spend a lot of time on on one specific planet or move to other ones um minecraft also would be really good i i've played it a bit um 
but it has sort of a similar thing to No Man's Sky, but you can do more as, in terms of the, the Lego, digital Lego kind of thing and building your own structures and things like that. And you can start new games and you have a whole different world and different layout to go and explore. So uh, probably one of those two games um, for sure. There you go. And our last one isn't really a question. It's more of a follow-up. So you might remember, uh, I think it was two weeks ago at this point, where this uh, listener emailed in and didn't leave his name, but he asked about No Man's Sky. Well, he wrote back, and his name is Paul, so we got that now. Uh, and he just wanted to drop a quick email saying, thank you guys for taking a minute for me. I really just wish they mashed a little Mass Effect 3 into No Man's Sky to give me something mm-hmm. to focus on. But... Y'all are awesome, Paul. So thank you, Paul, for emailing. And feel free to email us whenever. And all of you listeners out there can always email us at podcast at playsomevideogames.com. We thank you each and every week for giving us something else to talk about than what we have pre-planned. But I, I think you're missing one question. It's a very important question. I was going to save it, but okay. All right, I'll do it. The only reason I wasn't going to use this one is because uh, Jason of our Flux to Pose fame had this question in, in his podcast. But we will we will address it nonetheless, then. Fair enough. Uh, Sam writes in, with the passing of another great in the year of 2016, what is your favorite Gene Wilder movie? So, Nathan, since you were chomping at the bit for it, go for it. First off, I just want to say I loved Gene Wilder. His work was fantastic. Uh, he's one of the guys that, when I grew up watching movies, his movies were all, like, in the 70s. Uh, you know, Willy Wonka, you had... Uh, Blazing Saddles, you had Young Frankenstein, mm-hmm. you had a lot of great content with, with him. His performance was just always fantastic. I loved yep. watching him. And he was endlessly watchable. Uh, so he is a great talent that will be missed, but uh, his work lives on and endures to time indefinite. And, I mean, when you think of Gene Wilder, to me, you always think of uh, him as Willy Wonka and the, and the Chocolate mm-hmm. Factory, right? Charlie and Chocolate Factory. And I... Love that movie, and his performance in it is fantastic. Uh, he creates memes, or not he creates, but people create memes from him <laughs> yeah. to this day uh, from that Condescending movie. Wonka. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and he's just, it was a fantastic performance and uh, is definitely one of the legendary screen presences uh, that you would ever see on the screen. Him in that movie just makes you... Whenever you watch it, he always transports you to a, a world of possibilities. Even though it's, you know, it's it's Willy Wonka, right? It's it's a it's a candy factory, whatever. But he's just so enamored with, or I'm so enamored when he is on the screen. So has to be for me, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. His portrayal of Willy Wonka. Mm. Now Nathan, I'm a little disappointed because you're our resident movie guy. His movie was Willy Wonka and the Char- Chocolate yeah, Factory. Yeah, that's right. Sorry. My Johnny bad. Depp was in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. So. I, got him, I got him backwards. They were all based on a book, and I think the book was Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Yes, it was. Yeah, you're 100% correct. Um, so for me, actually, it's uh, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. And Willy, oh, see, now I'm doing it. Willy Wonka and the Chocolate <laughs> Factory is first to mind. And, I mean, I've seen that one with him probably more than any other film. Um, so it's kind of a toss-up between that or... My other favorite of his is um, Hear No Evil, See No Evil yes. with Richard Pryor. Such I a love funny love that movie. one. Such a funny movie. The two of them were just fantastic. Uh, if you're not familiar with it, you know, um, he's deaf and Richard Pryor is blind. And they kind of go on antics in a, in a terribly 80s comedy movie, but in a great way. Um, absolutely loved his performance in that one as well, too. So that, that's definitely a favorite of mine. Um, so, Seth, what about you? I'm going to make a confession. I've never seen Willy Wonka in the Chocolate Factory. <gasps> it's okay. You can you can rectify that after this podcast. I That's can. true. We're actually showing it in a ton of movie theaters this weekend. It yeah, is. I, I saw that. Um, as far as other movies, I haven't seen a lot of Gene Wilder, but um, and I haven't seen these two in a while, but I do like Blazing Saddles and Young Frankenstein. Um, Excellent choices. Those are about the only... I, I look, <laughs> When I saw the question, I looked through a list of his movies and... Um, and those were the only two that really popped out at me that I've seen. And I do, and I like Blazing Saddles. I like the Western setting and comedy. So Can't go wrong. Donnie, what yep. about you? Well, it's unfortunate to go last in this conversation because everything has been said. Um, 
Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory wasn't the one that I was going to go with. Uh, I, when we thought about the question, I, I looked up some other ones, and there's some that come to mind. Blazing Saddles, Hear No Evil, See No Evil. But there's, I mean, Willy Wonka is iconic. That is an iconic role. That is a lifeless, priceless, timeless role that will always be remembered. Uh, I hated Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. <laughs> I thought Johnny <laughs> Depp was bad, more or less because he wasn't Gene Wilder. And that's uh, unfortunate for him, but still, that's that's more or less how I saw it. So that's that's the that's my favorite movie of his and uh the one that will resonate with me, you know, forever. It it's funny too. So the the day it happened, I was reading, you know, a whole bunch of stuff on it and the comment from a relative of his kind of talking about, you know, his recent his, you know, end of his life battles with Alzheimer's and, you know, why they kept it secret and that never really was public or anything like that. And the response I think was fantastic and it's something I can totally appreciate Gene Wilder even more for saying it was that it wasn't a decision made in vanity. He didn't want, you know, people to think like, oh my God, you know, he's a great guy and he's falling apart. He said simply he didn't want kids to see him in the street and recognize him as Willy Wonka and be like, oh my God, it's Willy Wonka. And then the following question to be, what's wrong with him to the parents? He didn't want, his exact words is he didn't want to rob the world of any more smiles. And I think that is a, class act move right there and it makes me miss him even more to be honest but so now we will close the mailbag fine note to actually close on so thank you nathan for bringing that up that's a much better ending to our mailbag section uh we're gonna move on to the main event and this week it's gonna be a bit of a double header because we have two mini topics to discuss tonight and we're gonna talk about the second one first only so that Nathan gets to talk, because unfortunately I don't think Nathan's going to have a whole heck of a lot to say about one of these discussions. So first thing we're going to talk about briefly is um, what level of difficulty do you generally play your video games on and why? So do you go with the easy mode? Do you go with the super hard, et cetera, et cetera? And kind of why do you take that approach? So uh, let's throw it to Donnie first on this one. Sure. Um, I typically play games at whatever level is normal. Uh, whatever the medium out of the box level it is, uh, I usually put it on the developer. I, I think of myself, especially here at PSVG, I do consider myself probably the most casual gamer. Um, I'm not really a completionist. I play games, you know, when I can, while I can, until I'm bored of them, and then I move on to something else. Um, I don't really like grinding, and I don't really like dying a whole lot, and you know that overachievement moment where you finally pull it off. That that's I don't have the time for that. Um, so I typically play things on uh, normal or medium, whatever it is, the average difficulty. Uh, one thing I wanted to throw into the discussion is I also typically use guides, uh, especially if it's like a really big open world game. Um, I really don't like, um, I wouldn't say getting lost because sometimes it's fun and wandering around is fun. Like in GTA, uh, when I play GTA 5, which I still haven't beaten, when I play GTA 5, I just kind of just wander around. And you know, find, stumble across things. But in more linear games, I don't like to waste time like in an area where I don't know, you know, what I'm supposed to be doing. So I typically like to have, you know, my next move is supposed to be going this direction, and then I kind of take that that compass direction and kind of keep playing. Excellent. All right, Seth, how about you? What level of difficulty do you generally tackle with your games, and why? Um, so I'm a a little bit like Donnie, or I think. Um, think you as well where when i open up a new game like uh, uncharted i just want to play it at whatever the regular difficulty is um i uh, i don't like to be frustrated too much and i like to enjoy the story i like to have fun when i'm playing games i don't like to get worked up um now i so usually that's what i'll do and i and i beat uncharted on normal i've thought about going back and playing it on expert um and just haven't yet um, I have tried, uh, you know, the recent, uh, the recent, I don't know, trend, uh, the, the Souls games. Um, I have tried uh, Demon Souls and a little bit of Dark Souls 2 and Bloodborne. Um, and I really, really liked Bloodborne uh, more so than the other couple games. Um, but eventually I stopped halfway through just because I got tired of this running into the same wall 20 times and eventually breaking it down. But eventually I, I, it wore me down. Um, 
the other game uh, type of games that I play, I play a lot of sports games. And um, I'll usually start off, like when I get NBA 2K17, I'll probably start off on Pro or whatever the regular mode is until I'm comfortable with the controls and with the new systems and whatever. But um, but pretty quickly on NBA, I'll probably be up to whatever the top mode is, whether that's Hall of Famer or whatever it's called, I forget. Um, that's what mode I was playing on last year. And so I... If it's a game, if it's a sports game, I really like to be challenged, and um, and I, I mean I like to be challenged all the time. But in, I'm better at sports games than I am at shooters and things like that. So that's where I am. All right, I, I'm as you said, I'm pretty much on the same boat there. I'll normally play things at whatever the normal difficulty is. Um, for me, gaming has kind of always been mostly about the story or the experience. If it's something kind of different. Um, so I don't really want to be distracted by rage quits and like getting really irritated with a certain level and then, you know, maybe putting down a game I might enjoy. So I generally start with normal difficulty. If something is kind of tough or something like that, I might switch down if it has the option to, to drop the, you know, difficulty for a period of time then go back up. Um, but if it's a game, if it's a shorter game, not, not like my fallouts and stuff like that, where I can beat it in a couple of days or a couple of weeks. Um, if I really did enjoy it, I will go back and play it at a harder level, but I don't think I've really ever in probably since I was a kid going like, I want the extreme level difficulty. I've never really been a big fan of games that kind of push you to your limits. I like enjoying the experience to use it as more of a relaxing activity. So that's kind of where I stand with my difficulty. Um, but Nathan, what about you? Usually if it's, a uh story-based game like you know uncharted or something like that i just play it as intended uh which is typically the normal setting but if there's an option where you can go back and replay it and you know you want to go back and replay it make different choices and if you have like a higher level then i'm definitely going to up the difficulty to the harder level because typically at that point you're a veteran you've seen it before and you're ready to just tear it up as you go through again you know what i mean <laughs> But yep. for the first time to experience the game, I want to play it as the developers intended to be played, because I mean that's definitely I've I've heard a lot of developers say that you know there is a, there is a hard mode and there is a casual mode, but really the way that they want you to play it with the placement of the enemies and everything, it's it's always like the normal. So that's how I go, unless it's a uh, like Madden or something like that. Because in Madden you have the the rookie, you have the pro, all pro, and then all Madden. And in that, I'm always all pro, which I don't know if that's technically the normal or not, but it just adds a little bit more because I've been playing Madden for so long. Right. So rookie over here, I can't. <laughs> I tried playing all Madden once. I got picked off like nine times in the first quarter. Oh, yeah. I'm not up to all Madden yet, but just I'm up to the all pro. I, I can't do anything less than all pro. I hate it because especially when you go to kick or something like that, it's just like it. it's slower and it throws me off, honestly. So I just want to win. Like all the time. I just want to win all the time. You, I'm a Browns fan, right? So if I, if I don't put it on easy and dominate on Madden, like it's just never going to happen. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm a Rams yeah. fan, so I know what you're talking about there. <laughs> but it's at least I was a Rams fan. So that's usually how I how I play my games on the normal recommended setting. Awesome. All right, then. So our other main topic is a little Nintendo centric, if you will. Uh, this was going to be a news piece, but I think there's too much to cover as just a little news segment. and It would be a bit longer. So anybody want anything Nintendo for the bar? I'm going to head to the bar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm still going to ask for your feedback, Nathan. So oh, dang it. Yeah, sorry. But you, you, you got some time in between. We'll, we'll go to you last. All right, so I'm sure good. you'll have a lot of input, so we'll, we'll go through <laughs> it. Um, so Nintendo did a Nintendo Direct this past Wednesday uh, afternoon all about the 3DS, and they put out the little press release announcing it, and they, they you know, kind of put it on Front Street saying, listen, we're not talking about NX, so don't get your hopes up. So uh, I, me personally, I was able to go into this with a little bit more excitement then because I was like, okay, I don't need to worry about, all right, when are you going to talk about this? I was able to sit back and be like, okay, let's see what they got up their sleeves with the Nintendo 3DS. So I'm just going to briefly describe the things that they um, had discussed and highlighted, and then we're going to kind of go around round table and everyone give their opinions on what got them excited, uh, what they liked, what they didn't like, you know, just kind of give our feedback based on it. Because I think it was a pretty good direct. Uh, there, was, there was certainly a ton of news thrown at you in a 40-minute period. 
Um, and there were some surprises in there. So, but let's dive into it. So, uh, the big the big points to hit on here is a uh, Super Mario Maker is coming to 3DS systems in December of this year. So that was a big surprise. They hadn't talked about that previously. Um, they also announced that a new Pikmin game was unveiled. It's a touch based side scroller coming sometime in 2017, uh, featuring Olimar and the Pikmin characters. Uh, they are also porting over the Wii U version, essentially, of Yoshi's Woolly World and adding Poochie to it more. Uh, that's coming to the 3DS in February, so that's another you know Wii U title coming over to the 3DS. Uh, they announced uh, at during the Direct and made it available right away that The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword was hitting the Wii U Virtual Console for 20 bucks. Um, they also announced that new Zelda-inspired Amiibo were releasing this holiday season. It includes an 8-bit Link. Uh, that was also Toon Link and Toon Zelda from Wind Waker. And then a proper-looking Link figure from the Ocarina of Time. Uh, they did do some uh, Street Pass enhancements, allowing you to have up to 100 people at once check in on your Street Pass, as well as some new mini games that were released in a bundle or individually. Um, Mario Sports Superstars was another surprise they dropped on us. Uh, it's coming to the 3DS. Features golf, tennis, soccer, baseball, and horse racing. A little weird, but this was pretty cool. And once again, it's another title that we did not know was coming. Um, Picross 3D Round 2 came out today. Uh, not today. During the day of the, the announcement as well. Uh, that was like shown and then saying, hey, you can download on the eShop right away. Uh, Tank Troopers, which is like a new IP from Nintendo. Um was basically tank combat, similar to tanks, tanks, tanks on the Wii, I believe it was. Wii U. And, uh, Wii U, okay, so it was on the Wii U, so it looks similar to that, kind of cool. Um, then they announced that uh, Hyrule Warriors Legends uh, was getting its third DLC pack, which had um, Phantom Hourglass, um, what was the other one, the sp uh, Spirit, Spirit Tracks. tracks. Yeah, it was, the, um, it was the DS titles. Right, the DS titles ones. So it's kind of cool, but another thing like you didn't necessarily see coming down the line. Uh, and then they also announced uh, you know, some more details, not too much about the Animal Crossing extra functionality that's coming with the Amiibos and the cards, and they, they will give more um, coverage in that later in the fall to talk about some more there too. So, uh, And then they showed trailers for the games they had already announced already um, to, to kind of keep it fresh in your mind, Ever Oasis, Pokemon, um, some of the other titles in there were featured as well that we already knew were coming online. But the ones I just hit on was all the new stuff that we didn't really know it was coming down the pike and kind of caught us off guard. But um, so I, I talked enough here, so I'll come back and I'll, I'll go later. So why don't we throw it to Seth first, who is not a DS owner. What got you excited about this? Well, um, I typically don't pay any attention to Nintendo or to Nintendo Directs or to anything going on in Nintendo, or at least I didn't until about a month ago when uh, Donnie asked if I would join PSVG for ah, a little bit. Got it. Um, so, <laughs> uh, so I decided we were doing the live chat on the website yesterday, so I decided that I would keep the chat window open and uh, listen to the stream and, and watch it and, and whatever. And I don't know what happened, but... Uh, <laughs> They, they started going into their announcements, and they did Super Mario Maker uh, coming to 3DS, which is basically like the main game that I am interested in for Wii U. Um, so now that's coming to 3DS. They did um, Yoshi's Woolly World, <coughs> which I have played. I just played it in a store, um, but I think Yoshi's Woolly World looks awesome, on Wii U at least. And so I'd be excited about playing that one. Um, and then the uh, Mario Sports Superstars I thought looked really interesting. And uh, somewhere, something inside me broke. And um, decided that I was going to swap my PlayStation Vita for a Nintendo 3DS. <laughs> and, uh, and, and part of that is, and, and I really like the Vita, it's a great system, but I've kind of played everything that I want to play on it. I don't sure. know what else is coming on it. Um, the, the one game I haven't played was uh, Severed. And mm -hmm. it seems like I might have the chance to play that in other places soon enough anyway. Right. Um, and that's that's really the only game on, on my Vita. So, so I decided to trade that in for the chance at some new gaming experiences. And... Uh, Yesterday, 
um, posted it on eBay for sale. And then uh, today um, some other stuff happened, and I can let Donnie take it from here. <laughs> well, I'll pick up where that left off. Um, yeah, the, the, the Direct was great. Um, the Amiibo that they showed off, the, the new Zelda Amiibo, those are the Amiibo that I have pre-ordered. I've pre-ordered all four. As soon as they went up on Amazon, I was like, <laughs> I have to have these. Um, thank heavens they're doing a new Link Amiibo. And they're fixing yeah. that Smash atrocity. Uh, the Ocarina Amiibo looks great. It's better than the Smash one, so I absolutely had to get that one. Wind Waker is my favorite game of all time, so I had to get Toon Link and Toon Zelda. And then the other one's just 8-bit Link, and that's just, I mean, that's, come on. So so they got me there. I honestly thought maybe I was done with Amiibo purchases, and they got <laughs> me there. And I'm still waiting on Cloud, Bayonetta, and Corrin. So yeah. they've got at least three more in me. Um <clears throat> to touch on what Seth said, uh, I've been thinking for a while. I, I had the Majora's Mask new 3DS XL, the special limited edition, and uh, I had to pull some strings with my favorite GameStop employee to make sure that I got one. And I've been playing it for a long time, and I love it. I absolutely love my 3DS. It's one of my favorite. It might be my favorite console of all time. It is absolutely the thing that I've played most in the last two years. And for those that have listened to the podcast know I have everything. I have all the boxes. Um, but faceplates. <laughs> I've been looking at those faceplates on the what I'm calling the new 3DS Slim model, which is the regular model in Japan, but it came out like a year after the XL came out here. And those faceplates kill me. I love accessorizing and designing my consoles. I skin almost <laughs> everything. My 3DS has 12 themes on it. My PlayStation 4 has a bajillion themes on it. I've customized my own background on my Xbox. It is something that I really, really enjoy. And I've been monitoring eBay and Amazon and seeing what I can get out of my Majora's Mask console. And I, I brought it up to the group this morning. I was like, you know what, guys? I'm thinking about getting rid of this Majora's Mask one. And... Uh, and getting the slim one, the smaller one, so I can have faceplates, which Seth came in and said, well, why don't we do a swap? You give me your 3DS, and I'll give you my Vita and some other considerations, and then uh, you can get the slim one, which is what we did. So my 3DS <laughs> is all packed up and will be heading its way towards Ohio, and uh, I will be adding yet another Vita into the history of Tiny's <laughs> Gaming Library. I believe this will be the fourth Vita for me. Um, I really enjoy the Vita. It has great games on it. Hot Shots, Metal Gear are the ones that jump off to me. Uh, but for whatever reason, I've never really had the ability to have two portables. I mean, I can't carry both at one time. Right. I do prefer the Nintendo games, which is why I usually just carry my 3DS. So I've always looked at it as almost like a value proposition. Like, um, you know, I could trade this Vita in and get an Xbox One, or I can trade this Vita in and get Fire Emblem Awakening. I can trade this Vita in. It was always one of those things where now... I feel like I have a Vita um, from Seth, good control here, where it didn't, you know, cost me a whole lot. It was more of a trade. So maybe this one won't eat at me so much, and I'll enjoy the NCAA <laughs> football, Hot Shots, Metal Gear, Uncharted fun over there, and uh, the PlayStation 4 remote play. And I picked up the 3DS today. I got the new 3DS Slim model that's at Target. For those of you who don't know, Target has a console exclusive or a uh, – bundle exclusive Super Mario 3D Land 3DS that comes with two sets of faceplates and Super Mario 3D Land for $149.99. And it has a beautiful box and it's got great art. And I swear, I, I remember when they when they announced it, I remember tweeting it from the PSVG account. I was like, this is going to sell gangbusters. Yep. And it is. It's really hard to find. When Seth brought the idea up, I was like, well, I'll just go ahead and pick this up today. I had to drive 25 miles out of the way because they're <laughs> sold out across Atlanta. But I found one, and uh, I called them, and they held it for me, and I've already gotten it, and I've already done the system transfer, and I've already swapped out the plates, and I've already ordered two sets of more plates, and <laughs> like this is going to be a problem for me. I'll be importing all kinds of plates from Japan, but I, I'm really, I really do enjoy it. I will say... First impressions, obviously. I have a brand new console, so I do have those rose-colored glasses. But there are some immediate things that will jump out at you. Uh, it's it's lighter. It's 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 much lighter than the XL model. Uh, the XL model sits in the palm of your hands, whereas this one 
feels like it sits more in your fingertips, which is kind of how I remember always holding the Vita. I never really put the Vita in the palm of my hand as mm. much as I held it in, in my fingertips. Um, the one thing that I will say that I like about it most, Kevin, you may be able to back me up on this. I've had three 3DS XLs to include the new one. Mm-hmm. And if you're doing any motion gaming, uh, the top, the top clip, if you move it, it has some movement to it. You know, it'll, it it'll move back. Yep. It'll move forward. I've always attributed it. It's so heavy. You know, it's, 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 it's a big screen. The slim model doesn't have that. It's completely wow. gone, which I absolutely do love. I was playing Metroid Prime uh, Blast Ball earlier today, and it was the first thing that jumped out at me. Is the first game I played, and I was like, wow. There's no movement. I move it hmm. forward, I move it back, I lift it up, I lift it down, and it just stays, you know, that little click is not there. It just stays right where it is, uh, which I do enjoy. But the size difference is astonishing. I mean, it doesn't, you know, you see it in videos and stuff, and you're like, yeah, it's kind of smaller. It's much smaller. <laughs> it feels like when you put it in your pocket or something, it almost feels like it's half the size. So, um, but I do enjoy it. It's compact. You know, the the XL feels sturdier, like heavier. Um, whereas the, the slimmer model feels, uh, lighter, maybe more as like a toy, you know, it's kind of has like soft plastic as opposed to that hard shell, glossy plastic. Yeah. Um, but I do enjoy it. It took two hours to do the swap. I had to call Nintendo and reset my router and everything. (laughs) It took took forever to do a system transfer from one to the other. Um, but I really do enjoy it. And, uh, I was happy to make the swap and I look forward to owning a Vita yet again. Um, Back to the direct, the amiibos were really the the, the thing that took the cake for me. I, I saw some really good reactions that I wanted to bring up. Um, best tweet I saw was apparently all the Wii U games were just uh, timed exclusives for Wii U before they came to 3DS, <laughs> which I thought was a funny tweet. And then uh, I actually watched a YouTube video of somebody doing an overview of it where they said they heard a lot of Wii U owners were upset with this Direct because of all their games coming to 3DS, in which my initial reaction was, that's impossible because there aren't a lot of Wii U owners. <laughs> right? Uh, it's, it's, yeah. <laughs> that's so, like a third. A third of 3DS owners own a Wii U, so it's not even close. Exactly. Like, you have to sell more than 20 to be considered a, a lot. Right. If you're less than 20 million, you're not a lot, you're a little. So maybe a little Wii U owners were upset. Um, having owned both, I don't see a problem. I'm actually going to double dip on Mario Maker. I'll probably double dip on Yoshi's Woolly World because I do prefer the portable gameplay. Like I said, I, I play most of my – the majority of my video gaming these days are done on portable systems because I'm on the go so much. Um, Mario Maker I thought was really neat. Uh the networking you know they made the mention that you're not going to be able to share courses directly from your 3ds online that it's going to be a local share only via street pass and local wi-fi and i know a lot of people are upset about that um i wasn't when i first saw it i just kind of attributed it to it being on a portable i was like well this is a 3ds and it's not a wii u and it can't do the things wii u did and then i got schooled more or less by kevin and jason in the chat for a day (laughs) <laughs> where they explain to me all these things and the reasons why they think they could. And, and, you know, I honestly, I think that you guys are probably right. I bet they probably could and maybe they will. Um, but I did see a couple things that I thought were, were, were at least good points to make. I don't mind them using Mario Maker to re-encourage local play and carrying your 3DS with you. I think it's something they kind of got away from. Yeah. Uh, at their initial launch, and now you don't feel like you need your 3DS. I, for a while, I've been leaving mine at home. Whereas something like this, you know, the new Street Pass stuff, the new Street Pass updates, and Mario Maker is going to make me put it in my backpack because I'm going to want to see those courses and I'm going to want to yeah. share those. So I think that's a good thing. Also, I saw uh, Sean Capri uh, on Twitter. You know, he was like, I actually like this because, you know, navigating through the amount of Wii U courses is, is, atrocious like there's so much stuff and there's all these you know timed courses and you know run don't do anything courses and all these courses that you don't have to do anything and all there's a bunch of junk and uh, maybe kind of bringing that down a bit maybe it'll allow you to cultivate it you still get to play the wii u courses so there's also some cross promotion and uh you know you still have the recommended courses in the 100 mario challenge but to be honest with you 
I know the majority of the community, at least the YouTube and Twitter community, are excited to make courses and share them. I'm not in that community. I've made like three courses, and I may have shared one of them, and I'm pretty sure it's been deleted by Nintendo. All I want is to play other people's courses. I, I'm not a game designer, and sure. I don't have time to do that. So I just like the idea that I can have a $40 Mario Maker game on my 3DS, and I can play Mario courses forever with that game. Is that all your thoughts on the, the Direct? Did I miss something that you were expecting? <laughs> no, I don't. I don't know. I just didn't know if you were going to talk about anything else. So, okay, I, I I can jump in then. So, basically, right off the bat, the the Super Mario Maker, like you said, after settling down, after you know, after our comments, right after the direct, this and that, I I really do understand what they're trying to do with the Super Mario Maker thing. I just think it's not for me, but. I didn't play it on the Wii U. So I'm, I'm looking at a different perspective saying like, okay, well this is an opportunity for me to try and play it again on the go, which I'd probably prefer in this type of game, but I'm not getting the full feature. I think that's more what was getting me upset. And I really think honestly, it's just something that will either come down the line from Nintendo or it was simply a, Hey, we need to get this out this year to fill in our end of the year roster. Considering we're, we're, we push back the NX, the Wii U doesn't really have anything else coming out. We want to make these big announcements, and this is big. Let's be honest. Whether you like it or not, it's a big announcement. And I think they just had to get it done into a state where they could ship it and sell it by the end of the year. So I think personally, I think that's probably the primary reason it didn't happen. But I think that could be patched on the line. But for me, the biggest thing is that Yoshi's Woolly World. I am excited about this. I played a mess out of it on the Wii U. I, I literally unlocked everything. I got every costume, 100% at every level, every bonus level, everything. There's nothing else I can do in that game more. Um, but I may double dip on this one because I had so much fun with it. The addition to the Poochie stuff is kind of cool. And for me, so far, out of the, the few Amiibos I do have, the Yarn Yoshi is my favorite one anyway. And now they're going to do Poochie and bundle it on the 3DS one kind of excited for it so i just to have those two amiibo if nothing else so i, I think i'm probably going to double dip on that one when at first i wasn't going to uh myro sports looks amazing so I, i'm actually probably gonna be on board for that one as well that was but, the one that surprised me the most yeah i i did not see that coming and nor would i expected it to have that many sports in it you know they've done some of these sports alone you know golf tennis soccer baseball these have all been mario sports games standalone to put them all in and add in the weird addition of horse racing but that might be kind of cool i'd say well and the one thing to mention on that is it does appear at least to be somewhat full featured yeah, where it does. you know soccer is 11 on 11 yeah. and it doesn't look like it's the strikers crazy version of soccer no and baseball doesn't look like it's the sluggers crazy sluggers. version of sluggers but the core game like the full core game appears to be there and they've got online tournaments and online and local multiplayer plus the golf plus the horse racing um and it definitely appears like it's gonna, it looks like the content is overwhelming in terms of the the amount of money it's gonna cost you to own it. Exactly, I think that that's an awesome one. So I'll probably be on board with that. But for me, the biggest announcement, the one I that caught me probably yes. the most off guard and got me the most excited, is Pikmin. Um, for me, I catch you the most off guard. Yeah, I did not see that coming, I, and I don't know why because the the format that they're showing. So if you didn't see it on the direct, you can check it out on the website. Um, they're switching into a side scroller, and it's. Almost uh, like Donnie said, he got Chibi Robo Ziplash out of it right away, which I can see because it is a side scroller. But for me, it almost seemed more like a Lemmings type game from back in the day. If you remember okay. Lemmings games, yeah. um, and, and the side scroller put in. But for me, it, it makes sense that way because I wouldn't expect Pikmin to be in the same format it is on the consoles from from the Wii U uh, to the 3DS. Like I just don't think that's possible without losing a lot of the graphic component. I mean, Pikmin is a beautiful game. The environments are amazing in that game. To, to transition that to a 3DS would be tough in the same format. So the change in format, I think, it, while it is different, it's still very similar. It's still going to play the same way. It's just not top-down. You're still collecting items like you do in the regular Pikmin game. You still have to strategize which Pikmin to use when because of their abilities and capabilities and whatnot. Um, so I thought it was kind of odd when Jason had told me this morning that uh, already, much like people did with Metroid Prime Federation Force, are already petitioning Nintendo not to make the game. Yeah, it's going to happen. It, yeah, it, it's it's the internet, but I just thought, I'm like, wow, I didn't expect Pikmin fans to be upset about this. So Chibi Robo, I played those games as well, and I had a lot of fun with Chibi Robo back on the GameCube, and Chibi Robo Ziplash is nothing like it. You could have literally taken anything else and just made Ziplash with a different character, and it would have been the same type of game. It was not Chibi Robo. It wasn't 
a terrible game. It was mediocre at best. I had fun with it. I still play it from time to time, but it's not Chibi Robo. This still looks like it's Pikmin, although it's a little bit different. It doesn't seem to be that far of a departure. I think people be up in arms saying like, you can't call this Pikmin. I'm just like, it has all the components. It just doesn't, it's not top down. That'd be like complaining when Super Mario 64 came out saying, well, it's not Mario because he's not a 2D side scroller. doesn't really make sense. But that, I was excited about that one. So I, I can't wait for that to drop. Um, but let's see. So for me, there's not a lot coming out this year that I'm excited on the 3DS. But Pikmin 2017, well, yeah, I mean that is too. But I mean, are the new announcements coming out there? Oh, so okay. Yo- Yoshi's February, Pikmin's un, you know, no, not dated, but 2017. Mario Sports, what is that? That is that. They said too? they said spring. I was thinking uh, February, March, and then uh, Mario Maker's December. Okay, so for me, I'm probably waiting until 2017, but then this means I can probably snag a couple of titles this year that I hadn't played yet. Uh, I do want to get into Hyrule Warriors Legends. Every time I see it, it looks cooler and cooler, and I just want to try it. It's really it. good on 3DS. It's not, yeah. it's not, you know, the graphics aren't there like it is on sure. Wii U, but it's the adventure mode, really. Exactly. I mean, I wrote in my review, the adventure mode is so good on a mobile experience. Um, I do want to rope Nathan into this conversation. Absolutely. I was, thing, just, I was just about to throw it to him, so go ahead. One thing I wanted to ask you before I let you go, there's there's a couple things. Um, the way I hear you talk about Pikmin kind of makes me feel like some of the people that are talking about Metroid with Federation Force, <laughs> where, yeah. you know, it's it's not Metroid because you're not Samus. It's not Metroid because it's not this lonely exploration game, where it is largely the same game. Um Pikmin didn't surprise me. Now, we did a live chat, a YouTube live stream, live chat on the website. For those of you who didn't, uh, missed it, follow us on Twitter. You'll make sure you get the notifications next time. We plan on doing it with the PlayStation meeting. Um, I actually had to dip out in the second half, so I had to watch the second half of the direct at home with my kids. Pikmin didn't surprise me, at least when I first saw it, because we heard Miyamoto say that the Pikmin game, the next Pikmin game, was almost done. And when he said that almost a year ago, right, I think everybody said, well, it's NX. And I completely was like well it could just be 3ds <laughs> um because 3ds is such an install base the one thing about the pikmin game that did kind of rub me wrong at least in the way they showed it now this may not be the case is that it looks really easy it looks like one of yeah. those original ds games yeah where you just tap the screen to advance and i'm wondering where the challenge comes from it reminds me a lot of a uh, yoshi's island ds Mm-hmm. Where it uses the two screens for like scale and elevation, yeah. where you got to go look up and scroll up and then come back down. But it didn't really look, I didn't see anything from what they showed. And again, what they showed, I really feel looks like that looks like beta footage. I mean, that game it looks does. Like it really way does. off. Yeah. So that game is subject to change. But we also know, too, how many times they show a 3DS title and it doesn't sure. transition to Wells. Metro Prime, once again, is another one where it looked a lot blockier than it did once. Oh, well, I think the visually, visually speaking, I think it looks great. I was thinking more or less from from oh, how the much they showed. It looked right. like everything they were showing was from a particular point. In oh, the sure. Game. Yeah. And, you know, maybe unpolished mechanically. So I think it's early, which is why I think that game, you know, that game of all the games they showed, that one's probably the furthest off. It might even yeah, I think be, so too. It might even be this time next year. I, I think so, to be honest, because yeah. everything else they gave you at least this season, I think this was the only title where they literally just said 2017. This and Ever Oasis were the two titles that just said 2017. So, so the one thing that I wanted to ask Nathan to bring him into this conversation, Nathan is not just an Xboxer. Nathan yeah. has a PlayStation 4, and he's got other consoles. He's got a Wii U. But to my knowledge, Nathan does not have a portable gaming device, and he's quite on the road a lot. And also being someone who's not – I don't fly around as much as Nathan, but I'm quite on the go a lot. I, I, I couldn't call myself a video gamer if I didn't have one. So, Nathan, does this direct do anything for you in possibly getting a 3DS, or do you do you wish that you – enjoyed portable gaming or do you have any desires to jump into the to the pool you know there have been many instances where i i think to myself hey it'd be kind of fun to have a 3ds or a vita right now but at the same time carrying around in my pocket i have my phone that is just as powerful as either of those or more powerful. I was going to say, it's probably way more powerful. <laughs> <laughs> but you know when i have games downloaded to it and I just don't find myself playing games very much on the road because usually when I do, I'm just, if I do anything, I just want to either read comics or watch something on the plane. And when I'm at a hotel or something like that, I want to sleep. (laughs) 
that's that's pretty much all I, I do because I'm not at the hotel very much. I just I go to work and or wherever, and I'm at the you know I'm out with people or anything, and then I come back and I'm just wiped out, and I got to get up early the next morning anyway. So really, to me, it doesn't. I, I don't have a need that it, it would fill, but I wish that I did. So I want to. I mean. There's always the times where I feel like, hey, if I had a Vita, I have all these PS Plus games that I could play. I like sure. to play the Uncharted game that's on the Vita at some point. Mm-hmm. Maybe you know, I don't know if I ever will, but um, remote play does anything? No, I mean, because I could use my my Mac with remote play and, and it would do it True. just fine. Yeah, True. Yeah, sure. Um, and I would prefer using that anyway because of the controller. controller. Uh, yeah. It's. <laughs> It doesn't do anything for me, and when I do travel too, like I have my laptop and stuff, but usually I'm working if I have a free minute in a hotel room or something like that, or if I'm on a plane, you don't have internet connection that's reliable to do remote play. So that's where it comes into the fact that it doesn't. Nintendo is a handheld company to me now. I mean, they are right. They're going down the path of just going strict handheld with some say, TV I think functionality they have been for a while. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that, that's their bread and butter. They know what to do. They know that their market knows them for that. Um, and that's that's fine. That's, it's, it's great because, you know, Donnie, there's people like you that are really loving the direction that they're going. They they stand for something and they commit to it. They, they are family friendly, which is excellent. Um, not many companies can say that. Like, I would, I wouldn't mind being more of a Nintendo person if I had you know, kids under 10 in my house, you know, when, whenever my nieces and nephews are over, we're always playing Wii U. We're playing Mario Kart, Smash Brothers, uh, Super Mario 3D World, stuff like that. But this Direct just honestly didn't do anything for me for a mobile standpoint. And the only thing that I thought was kind of cool coming out of it was the, the Zelda Amiibos that they announced. But there's still no release date for the Cloud Amiibo, which is the only thing that I really want to buy from the, the Amiibo line at this point. Um, and Reggie, I, 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 he, his body wasn't ready for me. I, ha- I have a, a hypothesis <laughs> that I'll go ahead and throw out for the podcast and the viewership. You let me know if you're crazy, but I've almost... You're crazy. Mm-hmm. I have almost I come to grips with, I believe, whatever their next thing is, you know, this NX thing that we're hearing from. I believe those Amiibos will launch with the Smash whatever that comes to that. And that's when those Amiibos will come. And if you've got the Wii U version, they'll still play. You know, they're all just NFC chips. But I I have almost relegated myself that we haven't heard anything about them at all, not even an update. And I've almost just come to grips with they're going to they're going to go. Here's Smash Bros and X with Cloud and Bayonetta. And it's, you know, they're in the box. (laughs) <laughs> and when, you can when play did they them announce it too when did they announce it oh, it was like, like a year like, ago that's what i was thinking like, yeah it seems it's like been it's been over a long year long time they've launched literally with these new zelda ones and the new mario ones they've launched a whole new line of mario ones they've launched like 10 amiibo in between announcing those and they have not even provided an update for those outside of them saying these characters are getting amiibo that was it they haven't said anything since so I, I think I think they're putting this off. I think it's going to come with NX. Okay, so yeah, they were announced on twelve on December fifteenth of last year. So not quite a year yet, but it's been it's been a long time. Yep. It says it looks like it was April or May that they were supposed to to be in stores, and then they kind of just stopped talking about it completely. So I think you might be right. I, I would expect some sort of a bundle or something down the line. Um. So so Nathan, uh, was there anything? in this direct that would have you excited if you were a 3ds gamer currently do you see anything that you're like oh this is kind of cool or is this is completely dumb kind of thing <sighs> no no <laughs> doesn't do anything for you no i mean and i i hate to be the debbie downer in this i mean no, no, I, no. i'm glad that you guys are finding cool stuff out of it just and you guys are probably the same way when Phil Spencer goes on the on the stage and talks about stuff coming down the slate for Xbox and features yeah. on the platform and things like that. You guys probably just don't care. Um, but it just, to me, not being a guy that has a 3DS, and I haven't had a, a, a mobile Nintendo since the, was it the DS Lite, maybe? Sure. I think I bought my wife one of those uh, when we were dating. And that's been a long time ago. Wow. Um, <laughs> it's, uh, I... Like I said, there there's a lot of great games out there, but I just 
Nintendo just needs to draw me back in somehow, and I don't know if they're yeah. going to be able to do it. Sure. I can, I can appreciate that. Believe me, that that's one of the things we love about our little group we have going on here. We all have different perspectives and likes and dislikes, so don't feel like you're being the Debbie Downer because we want to try and give the perspective from all different points of view. So I completely respect that. And and you're right. When Xbox, generally speaking, when they do press conferences, the only parts I pay attention to at all are whatever games they show and nothing else. And I will be like, oh, that's kind of cool. I wish I could play that. Or, you know, I wait for something to come out that eventually does come to PlayStation down the line, whether it's a timed exclusive or something. So, but, you know, they talk about features and functionality, what's down the line for Xbox. It's just right over my head. So I, I completely respect that. So. Thank, thank you for putting up with us tonight and on that on that behalf there. Um, so let's jump off this then and time to jump into the news of the week. This week in Play Some Video Game News. Seth, why don't you kick it all off and let us know what you got brewing over there in your corner. All right, got a... Uh few quick items um number one uh call of duty infinite warfare is getting a multiplayer beta on october 14th coming to playstation 4 first um also uh coming up this coming weekend um on i think ps4 and xbox one gamers can play overwatch for free on september 9th through the 12th um so that's probably i haven't played it yet um i'll probably jump in then and then uh, Firewatch um, is coming to Xbox One on September 21st. Oh, yeah. um, and they have a couple other modes. Like there's a free roam mode that's that's launching on Xbox One and a couple other things. That's cool. Um, which look kind of neat. Mm. Um, the other thing that actually that just popped up on, on IGN right now, um, probably by the time this goes up, you might be better off googling it but there's a uh, an article that just says 27 high-res images of microsoft hololens oh and uh, i've been it, i think it was just posted i know it was just posted today friday um and i've been kind of clicking through there it looks kind of neat not neat enough for me to run out and buy an xbox one so i can get this thing but you it can't looks pretty get hololens on xbox one yeah as i say that's going to be oh, a pc thing it's a pc thing wow well, not I enough. watched the um, there's Five. tutorial videos or introduction videos on like you know how to set it up out of the box. Those came out this morning. I watched them. Really cool. Yeah, it, lo- it looks really cool. I'm I'm still probably not in the neighborhood of of doing that, but um, but I think it looks cool. Can I go off topic for a minute? Yes, absolutely. What the heck is PlayStation doing charging sixty dollars or Ubisoft rather? For the Star Trek Bridge Commander VR game. Oh God! <laughs> yeah, that doesn't make any sense at all. That's a, that's and that's people a twenty dollars. People complain shovel. about Me Plaza games and tanks, tanks, tanks. <laughs> it's true. Sixty dollars for that thing. That thing looks like a piece of hot trash. It it really does. The Batman one is only forty. I mean, maybe, maybe. See, I don't know. Maybe it's because they can't show you accurately what it looks like in VR. I don't know. But I, I imagine, did they ever say how much that's? Well, did they ever say that how much that stupid like hawk game was going to be too? Where they yell at each other I and think steal it was eggs 40 as well. See, I mean, that's another one where it's like, I can't even see that being worth forty. That's like a twenty dollars game, but to boldly price. Yeah, well, uh, of Ubisoft, Kevin, are you still planning on getting Watch Dogs? I feel like that was like the game of E three that I haven't heard anything about in a while. Oh no, they they've been still been pushing stuff. They showed a bunch of the multiplayer aspect and how that works. A video actually went up this past week on it. Um, so they're still they're still putting stuff out there. It's just not there's no main stage right now to put it out on. But okay. yeah, I, I think I mean depending on so that that drops I think on my birthday or right before my birthday, right after whatever. My birthday is the eleventh, November eleventh. So uh, it comes out right around that time. So depending on what I get, gift cards, money wise, that might be a purchase for me because uh, I'm still looking forward to it. But yeah, it hasn't been completely silent but yeah the hype came down a bit after e3 um just while they were doing the final presentations but they did show a bunch of multiplayer stuff uh over the last week week and a half i think okay so all right then um so actually donnie we'll throw it to you then what do you got going on for news well i was going to talk about firewatch but seth already took all my stuff so <laughs> um let's see here i've got one but let's get one out of the way uh episode two 
of Telltale's Batman series comes September 20th. Mm -hmm. And the one that I'm most excited about is Overwatch goes free to play September 9th through 12th. We already had that. Place. Oh, yeah. sorry. <laughs> See, I, I had like eight tabs open and I just heard Seth go through like half. So I was closing them. No. And I guess I missed that one. So, right. so, yeah, so to recap, Seth sorry. already talked about Overwatch, <laughs> um, Call of Duty, Firewatch. Seth, this is not how we do things. I apologize. <laughs> no, I, I mean, you know, I'll just say this. Here's the news. I'm excited about Overwatch because I feel like it's one of those great games this year that I have not played. And yeah. I don't think I will buy it because it's so multiplayer focused and I really don't play those. But if you can give me the opportunity to play it for a weekend, I definitely want to see what all the, what all the buzz is about. So I, I'm actually really excited to play it. So, you know, September, you know, 10th, 11th, and 12th, if you're looking for Donnie online, and I'm going to be on PlayStation playing Overwatch. What, why I'll not on Xbox? Xbox? I'll play <laughs> on Xbox with Nathan, too. Why there you not? go. Yeah. There you go. We'll do both. At the oh. same time? <laughs> yes. That's, that's impressive. Picture in picture, and we'll stream it. All right. <laughs> Look I'm forward sure to that post. boxes would explode. <laughs> oh, did you have anything else, Donnie? No. No. All right. Nathan, do you have anything on your, your ducket over there? Sure. So PAX 2016 is going on right now. And yes. there's some news coming out of there. Um, Donnie already mentioned the Telltale Batman series is getting the second series. So uh, on my list, though, they did announce that the next season of The Walking Dead, the next proper season, is going to be releasing in November. And it is going to oh, be wow. entitled A New Frontier. And it takes place four years after the events of the first series. Wow. So, it's oh. uh, it looks 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 good so far. There's a trailer out there that you can watch right now, um, and another piece of news that I had. This is actually just hot off the presses. I haven't been able to really verify this, but it's making its way on the social media uh, next week or the week of Labor Day that is coming up now. There will be a demo that you can download and play Forza Horizon Three. Uh, so that demo is coming out ahead of the game. The and new you one. can check it out. Yeah, the new one. And mm, uh, yes. so the current one with Games with Gold, you know, just flipped over in September 1st, you can download the Games with Gold version of Forza Horizon, which is backwards compatible on Xbox One. But Forza Horizon 3, I am super excited about. This game looks amazing. And the demo is forthcoming. It'll be just around the corner after you listen to this or just just like two seconds behind you. Just turn around, go get it, download it now. Those are my, those, that's my Labor Day weekend plans. <laughs> there you go. Well, it may not be out before Labor Day, sir. This is, this is for the listener's benefit, not for yours. Ugh. <laughs> so. Are you disgusted by the listeners? What was that? <laughs> this is for the listeners. Ugh. Ugh. Those people. A uh, couple more things just quick. I thought this was kind of interesting. Uh, a while back, there was a big hubbub about Lindsay Lohan suing Rockstar for her yes. image in GTA V. <laughs> that lawsuit has been dismissed by the state of New York appellate courts. So reasoning was that she wasn't in the game. Uh, they didn't use her name, portrait, picture, any of that. And because of that, you got no case. So they threw it out, dismissed it, failure. Another cool thing. It, hold, on, hold on, before you before you join the next one. How did it take this long for them to officially throw it out of court? It's like, the court system. It takes forever oh, to do anything. Like right off the bat, though, everyone was like, "They have no case. They have no case against Rockstar." But anyway, all right, sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, and the last piece of news that I thought was kind of cool, tying my love for Final Fantasy and my love for music, that on September seventh, the Final Fantasy fifteen soundtrack will be played live at Abbey Road Studios. And streamed around the world. Wow. So it's going to be an hour-long concert. And it's going to be performed by the London Philharmonic Orchestra. Sure. And there's going to be an appearance from Yoko Shinomura. So it'll be very cool. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Abbey Road Studios is very iconic in in music fame. Uh, Beatles recorded there. There's just uh, It's got a history that's really cool. Um, so... I'm excited to hear this, listen to it. Uh, I'm going to try to stream it live because I think it's going to be yeah. really cool to listen to and see what they got cooking up over there. I agree. That That's pretty exciting. Um, I just want to note then, since since Nathan's done with his news, if you, I think if you go back and listen to every episode so far of PSVG, this might be the first week Nathan did not have any Star Wars news. Coming soon from Star Wars Battlefront is the Rogue One. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> As I say, I saw some Star Wars stuff on Twitter this week. I know there's news out there. Nothing of, of pressing no, note, no. honestly. It's yeah, just it's, it's stuff that we already knew. There's a new Hut contract if you care. Nobody cares. Nobody plays Star, <laughs> Star Wars Battlefront anymore. Uh, it's twenty dollars right now on sale. I'm gonna Best play Buy. it when I can get all the DLC in the game on a on a deal. You, That's when I'll start playing that game. It's on As sale. I say, it's probably right cheaper now. right now to get the game in the season pass. Well, if you the last I saw the season pass was still like I saw a deal on it the other day, and the season pass was like twenty five dollars. That that is half price. And the yeah, game I mean, is twenty dollars, so all of it together is forty five dollars. Dude, I paid yeah, one hundred and thirty. Shut your whining. I'm trying to get all of that game for like thirty dollars or less. I was say, if they, if, spot. I was say if they do a game of the year edition, it's going to be fifty or sixty bucks anyway. So it's actually cheaper right now to get it. I'll see what Black Friday has to say. <laughs> I still haven't completed my ten hours on EAX. I still have like four hours left to play. Then you really don't want to play it. No, I want to have it because my son really enjoyed it. And I like jumping into it and flying around, but it's not something I'm going to sink, you know, Nathan amount of hours into. <laughs> it's like it's when I go see Rogue One, I'm going to want to come home and play Battlefront. When I go see the next one, I'm going to want to come home and play Battlefront. You know, it's it's that thing. If it had a campaign, though, you know, I would have been right there with you, Nathan. But, you know, just because it's, it's, it's something I want to do with friends and like social kind of how you are with Mario Kart. It's something like that, um, which is why I want to add it to the library. Um, but, you know, there is a limit to, to my desire for that. All right, boys and girls, with a single solitary tear rolling down my cheek, it's that time again for us to say goodbye. But before we do, we'd like to tell you about some few things we'd like to plug. So I will throw it to Donnie first. Come visit us on uh, playsomevideogames.com. I do believe after the hacks and the site was brought down and the update that we've given you last week, we are back online. I believe all reviews have been restored. Most all posts and news posts from the past have been restored and we are cooking with gas. Uh, during the Nintendo Direct, you know, like I mentioned, we had the live stream, the live chat, everything ran great. I really enjoyed it. It was really fun. Uh, we want to do the same thing next week for the, for the uh, PlayStation meeting. So definitely come join the site. Uh, come comment. Uh, the Nintendo Direct site had like 30 <laughs> comments within a few hours, which we, we really enjoy. We love interacting with all of you. And then uh, if you want to challenge yourself to some more friendly debate, um, come at me on Twitter at Play Nintendo. Uh, come tell me what you think. Boom. There you have it. Seth, anything you'd like to plug? Um, not a whole lot. Uh referenced it earlier but i had a review of valley go up um and also a i did a full playthrough of that and a review done quick video that you can get an idea if you're interested in it um also on uh, wednesday i think i put up an article about the sega genesis i had a, a genesis when i was growing up and uh august was the month that it launched in the united states um, so I looked back at a few of my favorite uh, Sega Genesis games, and so search for that on the site, um, and make fun of me for how much I liked Shaq Fu. Um, <laughs> Shaq Fu was uh, awesome. Yeah, um, I, it gets a lot of crap, but it does. It, it does. Um, it. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> but uh, but go on there and and uh, you know tell me about your favorite 16-bit games, games you played on Genesis or. SNES, things like that. So that's it. All right. And Nathan, would you like to plug something, perhaps something a little entertaining? Oh, well, I could. <laughs> the uh, podcast that I do independently, we'll say, is called That's Entertaining. You can go check it out. It's on iTunes and all those places. We're talking about Sherlock right now. We're just, we're in our cumber block because, you know, why not? <laughs> and I'd really actually like to take another minute if I could and just, again, uh, plug Extra Life again for this year. We're coming around the corner. We're in September now. Uh, the day is fast approaching for the Extra Life marathons. And if you would like to find out more or donate to help sick kids in need, please visit extra-life.org slash participant slash NT. Mm -hmm. we still gotta get together nathan and do our uh our special podcast around that too so we do S stay tuned for that boys and girls 
Um, and uh, just as Seth had mentioned, we also had another review go up this week as well with a review done quick and some video uh, by none other than Mr. Jason himself. He played a talent not included. So be sure to hit up the website and check that out. You can also read my new uh, weekly rant, if you will, uh, entitled Nintendo Stop Being Stupid. Um, so it's funny me talking so nicely about Nintendo in this podcast, but however, earlier in the week, I was not as happy with them and how they're handling the NX. So be sure to check that out and let me know what you think. Uh, keep the debates flowing. Uh, as a reminder, you can always email us at podcast at playsomevideogames.com. You can reach out to us on Twitter at underscore PSVG. Uh, make sure you follow us on Facebook, facebook.com backslash play some video games. Um, let's see what else we got going. I think we've covered it all. So Please continue to share the podcast with your friends. We rely on all of you to get the word out. Uh, and if you can, take a couple minutes. Just give us a quick rating on iTunes as well. That would really help us out. Um, but as always, boys and girls, on this long weekend, never stop gaming. Hello? Oh, we hear you. Oh, you hear me? Uh, I'm like, uh, hello? <laughs> Does anybody hear me? <laughs> but we may have lost Kevin. <laughs> yeah, I think we have lost Kevin. Uh-oh. Unless he muted his mic. <laughs> well, this will be fun to edit. Maybe he fell asleep. Yeah, he probably yeah, he did. did. You went on for quite asleep. a while there, Donnie. <laughs> I didn't say that. Just I didn't mean kidding. that. Just kidding. Kevin says he can't hear us. So let me mark this down. It's around the 48 to 50 minute mark. There's yeah. no earthly way of knowing which direction Kevin's going. I completely forgot to mention that when Family Guy does a spoof on you, you've made it. <laughs> Is he sleeping? Is he snoring? Uh oh. Great. Oh, he did. <laughs> I say he did. <laughs> <laughs>